The next thing we want to do is pack our flight bag. You see a little symbol on your EFB, it looks like a suitcase, and it's even alerting us with this uh, red circle and the exclamation mark. It's uh, letting us know that we should pack our suitcase or pack our bag. So if we tap on that, what this is going to do is going to basically download all of our information to have available to carry with us. So let's say, for example, that you didn't have current charts or perhaps you just didn't have something particular downloaded that you might need from the flight. It will prompt you to um, you know, have those downloaded and current for this flight. So let's go ahead and pack this. And you'll see all of the different things it's going to give us, like weather and fuel prices and NOTAMs, and again, any of those uh, charts or airport diagrams that we might need for our flight. Now, it may take a couple minutes for this to run, so while, while it's doing that, we'll close that out and we'll uh, work on something else. Click down here on Flights, and let's double check our nav log and make sure that everything appears to be normal pertaining to this particular flight. You see we're going from Golf Mike Uniform to Charlie Alpha Echo, and we're going to be flying November 8700 Papa, so 172, and this is a VFR flight. And we're planning on flying at 5,500. 48 minutes in route, 82 miles. Yes, all that makes sense. And as we work over here to the right, it says uh, flight fuel 11 gallons, and then additional taxi fuel 2 gallons. So this would be the minimum flight uh, considered for this, or excuse me, the minimum fuel considered for this flight. Um, this does not include our reserve fuel. Remember, the legal rule is 30 minutes for daytime VFR and 45 minutes for nighttime VFR, but most pilots like to have at least an hour reserve, so we'd consider an extra 10 gallons along with this as a minimum to take with us. And we see all of our checkpoints are here. We have Greenville, top of climb, our checkpoints, top of descent, and then down to Columbia. And then we can scroll down to the bottom at the summary and make sure everything looks uh, correct for this particular flight and it all looks normal. If we scroll down a little further, we get um, diagrams for both our departure and destination airport. So all of that looks good. The next thing we want to do is we'll back out of that and we'll go ahead and get our briefing, our weather briefing. Now this information is coming from the uh, National Weather Service and it's going to give us a complete briefing just like if you call on the 1-800-WX brief. Um, so it'll go through a very thorough briefing as well as the sequence in which the information is presented will be very similar to um, when you call 1-800-WX-BRIEF. Okay? So it starts out with any air mats, SIG mats, and convective SIG mats for your route. And then if you look at the bottom it says next, so we're just going to keep tapping next and scroll through. And you want to read the information um, as you, as you uh, scroll through these. The surface analysis chart comes next and you can just tap on it to get an, an enlargement and we see that right now there's a low pressure sitting over us and a trough and a high pressure just to the west of us and then you can look over on the little legend and it shows the intensity of the rain and if there's any um, icing or snow we can back out of that and move on to next will be the METAR so the METAR is going to come in a coded description be sure you are able to decode this information for your examiner. Now while you're still learning, if you forget what something means, feel free to just click over on the plain text button and it'll, it, and it'll um, display the information in plain text. Next, it moves on to cloud coverage. And if you remember, a couple years ago we used to have something called an area forecast, which was abbreviated FA, and that showed like an overall picture of um, the weather in a, in a l large areas, um, whereas the METAR and TAF are kind of uh, more narrowed into a particular area. The area forecast used to cover a widespread area. So now they call it a graphical forecast for aviation known as a GFA, and that, that shows the cloud coverage and then the next um, screen is going to be the visibility and surface winds and precipitation. But on this one, if you want to take a closer look, you just simply tap on it and you can look at the legend and it shows that the gray color, the clouds are made up of few, scattered, and then the lighter kind of blue-purple color would be a broken layer, and then finally the darker blue-purple color is an overcast layer. It also can show you air mats uh, for both icing or uh, mountain obscurations. Okay, we'll back out of that 
And moving forward, the next thing is the uh, visibility and surface winds and precipitation. And again, you can just tap on it to uh, get a more detailed view. And if we zoom in a little bit closer, we'll notice that there's three color codes for thunderstorms. The lightest pink code represents that there are about 10 to 20 percent thunderstorm coverage in that area. And then the red medium shade color represents 50 to 30 percent coverage of thunderstorms in that area. And then finally, the more maroon color is representative of uh, 50 to 100 percent thunderstorms in that area. Um, this chart can also show you uh, obscurations, uh, flight visibility, and the surface winds. The surface winds are shown with the little wind flags. And in an earlier video, we discussed that a short hash mark means five knots, and then the longer hash mark means 10 knots. And if there were both the long and short on the same line, obviously you add them together, and it would be 15 knots. So in our area, it looks like um, there's a 50 percent um, uh, chance of thunderstorms or thunderstorm coverage in the area and the winds are about five knots out of the east. Okay, we'll back out of here and moving on, the next thing is the TAF for both our departure and uh, destination airport. Again, it comes in the coded information, so if you need to decode that, uh, then you just click up on the top right where you can put it into a plain text format. Again, be sure that you understand how to decode this for your check ride. The next chart is the uh, wind chart, and this one is shown again with uh, the wind flags. And then we can move uh, advance further, and it'll show us a profile or cross section of the uh, wind. So this is kind of nice because we can see the winds, how they may possibly change in the climb portion, the cruise portion, and then the descent portion. Okay, moving further is uh, the winds aloft in a table format. And um, th for our, uh, the altitude for this particular flight, we had chosen 5,500. So it's going to show us how the winds might change as we uh, progress along on our flight plan. Okay. Next, it, the uh, briefing gives us all the notums. So there's a lot of different notums. We have departure notums and then destination notums and uh, and route notums, and there's a lot to lot to notum. So you scroll through those. Um, once again, they come in a coded format that may be a little difficult to read, so you can always use the plain text uh, button up here on the top right. Or if you still have any additional questions, you know, feel free to call the flight service station and just let them know, hey, I see a notum for a particular airport, but I had trouble deciphering it, and I'm sure they'll be happy to help you out, uh, help you read it properly. Okay, and then uh, finally, the last one are the air route traffic control notums, artsy notums, and then you're back at the beginning again. Okay, so once you have your weather um, uh, understood, then the next thing we can do is move down to the bottom right where it says proceed to file. Now, what we want to do is click this and we want to file our flight plan with the flight service station. When you go fly, you'll actually have to talk to the flight service station and open it or activate your VFR flight plan right before you take off. Or you can also get airborne and then open it once you're airborne. Okay, we want to scroll through this and make sure everything looks correct. So we have, um, we filled out our ICAO format, flight plan, flight rules or VFR, or general aviation. We have the proper tail number, our true airspeed, and all this information we had put in uh, a little bit earlier. Number of aircraft, one, airport, we're departing, golf mic uniform, and the time, souls on board, and the altitude, time and route, uh, fuel on board, that looks like it's missing, so we need to put that in there. And we said we had five hours and 45 minutes on board, so we can simply update that. Other information, special handling, airports for a destination, all that looks correct, and now we're in the emergency section, and then the pilot section. So anytime it says required, you're going to have to tap that and fill that out. So we'll just put my name in there real quick. Yep, and we'll scroll down a little further. It looks like the phone number is required, so we'll put in the flight school phone number. We got eight six four. 
202-3342. And then you just hit done. All right, then we can go ahead and file that flight plan. Are we ready to file it? Yes, we're ready to file it. There you go. Now, one other thing you may want to do is um, if you open your nav log back up, um, it gave us an opportunity to print this out. So you would just tap on the top, top right here, and then you can have a printed copy to carry with you if you like in the airplane. We've completed our uh, flight log using the 4Flight subscription, and I hope you enjoy your first cross-country flight.